When people think about tiny house living, initially they think, oh, I can't do without my things. I'm here to tell you that there is a freedom that comes with getting rid of things and getting rid of all that extra space that you think you need. I have so much of my life back and that makes me so happy. Hi, I'm Jen. Welcome to my tiny house on wheels just outside of Boulder, Colorado. My tiny house is 34 by 10 feet. I spent $175,000 to build it and I only pay $725 a month for rent. A typical day in the tiny house starts with a great cup of coffee. From there, I typically spend a few hours doing freelance design. I am lucky that I have plenty of work that lets me work flexibly from home. And when I'm done with that, my very favorite thing to do is hit the trails, go out for a run. In 2018, my marriage of 18 years ended. And of course, the first problem I needed to solve in my affluent community near Boulder, Colorado was affordable housing, especially on a single income as a single parent. And as I began to search, I ran across a tiny house. So once I saw the idea, I went headfirst into it and there was a lot to learn, but thankfully it was something new that I could focus on. And I found it to be something that just brought me back to life. It was a new idea, a new way to live, a second chance. I fully expected him to start building immediately my tiny dream house, but that is not exactly how the timeline played out. Unfortunately, for several months after I bought the shell from him, he did nothing. And I began to panic and realized it's time for me to find a plan B. So my advice to anyone who asks me how to go tiny or if they should buy a shell off Craigslist like I did, I say, absolutely not. I ended up spending $175,000 all in. My house was delivered in January of 2021. It was better than any idea I shared with them. They heard my ideas, they saw my vision, and totally knocked it out of the park. The day that the house was delivered was the first time my kids actually saw or stepped foot inside the tiny house. Their jaws dropped. They totally immediately fell in love with this space, thankfully. I currently have my tiny house just on the outskirts of Boulder, Colorado, where I rent a spot in someone's backyard. My current spot is $650 a month, and that includes my water and electric, and I pay $75 a month for my own high-speed internet. My tiny house is very modern farmhouse. It's light and bright, has very high ceilings, and lets a ton of natural light in. This enormous kitchen was the whole reason I decided I could definitely live in a tiny house. I have tons of storage space, tons of counter space, and so much room to entertain and cook with my kids and have great family time. Coming into my tiny living room, it really felt so tiny to me whenever I first stepped into it, but once I added my sofa and my TV and my hanging chair and my fireplace, it felt perfectly cozy. All right, let's head up to my primary loft. I also wanted space for a king size bed, even though I'm on this journey alone. If I ever decided to share this space with someone and be in a relationship, I want a little extra space. I also have a little closet here with space for hanging clothes, sweaters, jackets, things like that. And even these cubbies have even more like books and clothes stuffed in them. 
So I really have no shortage of storage space, even in the loft of my tiny house. The second loft is solely for my daughter. She has plenty of space to spread out and do homework or whatever she wants to do up there. Welcome to my tiny house spa, the bathroom. I have tons of storage in here for all of my clothes. I keep this system with bins where I can easily mix and match. Right across from it, I have my handy dandy combo washer dryer which is great because it goes straight from the wash to the dry cycle. And it's really easy just to take things out and put them right back where they go, easy. I also have my soaker tub, AKA horse trough. People constantly ask me, what is the brand of your tub? It's a horse trough. <laughs> I also have a waterless compost toilet, which makes it super easy to find a parking spot because you don't need sewage. People ask me often what I would change about my house. And honestly, there really isn't a lot, but I have really battled trying to keep running water in the tiny house because once it is 19 or below, I have lots of issues with my heated hose malfunctioning or freezing. You know, when I went into planning for tiny house living, I, I was a little nervous. I just had to keep telling myself, it doesn't have to be forever. Honestly though, now that I'm here, I totally love it. I love the minimal aspect of it. I love the idea that I could move it everywhere. I have a long list of places I would love to move the tiny house to, like, I don't know, Oregon, Utah, maybe Texas, California. And it's giving me options to go wherever I wanna go with it. Happiness comes in all shapes and sizes, and it's never too late to start over and learn new things. Never in a million years thought I would be living in a tiny house, and it's changed my whole perspective on life. I'm happy to say that my kids constantly say, Mom, you're happier than we've ever seen you. So, <laughs> never too late to start over. Don't worry about what people think if you're not living in the standard cul-de-sac home or, you know, 3,000 square foot house. There's lots of different ways to rebuild your life and be happy following divorce. So it's just nice, especially with the rising cost of homes, to give my kids another example of a way to live that is more affordable and just could bring them happiness.